Hey everyone, so today uh, it was one of those moments when there was something I was extremely inspired about sharing and there's been a few videos like that in the past for my YouTuber, where's my fingers, YouTuber career uh, and uh, funny enough a lot of them turned out to be very influential or, or the ones which people really found some uh, important valuable messages I guess because I felt I found something for myself and that was useful to others too. It's funny too that always when I want to share these, these kind of highly inspired uh, discoveries, I do get a little bit of a doubt of, damn, should I, should, should I really do this? Should I really, you know, go through? It kind of happened with Aikido versus MMA and uh, with the other videos, uh, because it's, it's a bit of kind of exposing yourself quote unquote, being psychologically naked and sharing, you know, kind of these rough or open, almost intimate explorations. Uh, but I noticed that that doubt is not always necessarily a bad sign. Sometimes it's just a sign of change or it's a sign that, you know, it's just a certain implication, which if you don't worry about, eventually things just work out. So I don't want to get into that dynamic too much with you, maybe in another video. Uh, but I guess a disclaimer is whatever I'm going to share about right now, it's been fairly fresh. It's not like today. I have a philosophy of my own that I need to wait at least a few days uh, before sharing something if I'm or, or making a decision if I'm like super hyped, because sometimes it's just a hype feeling and you know, you, you just feel the rush at the moment and then you do it and you're like, why did I do that? So usually I allow myself to wait and see, okay, does this hype stay? Does this inspiration stay? And if so, that's usually an indicator for me that, okay, there, there may be something there more than just a, a passing hype of the moment. So I discover whatever I'm gonna share um, uh, about a week ago. Um, and I'll tell you quickly how that happened. Uh, so first of all, I'm in communication with uh, a person who we are having a lot of discussions, like kind of like sessions, and that is bringing me a lot of insights. Uh, I will tell in the future what that specifically is. Uh, right now, it's, uh, we decided it's not yet time for me to, to, to share who I'm working with and, and, and in what way. Uh, I guess that sounds weird now, but anyway, trust me, it's all good. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, kind of being in this coaching uh, relationship with this person and, and that person gives me a lot of insights which make me think and give me, kind of empower me to, to discover new things, which is awesome. But I'll speak about that another time. Uh, another thing, an influential thing that happened among everything else, obviously, it's been a, a lot, there's been a lot of changes uh, for the past few years and also months. Uh, but one of those things is I had a conversation with Dr. Jared Miracle. Yes, Miracle. He made a joke about his own surname, but that's his surname. I love it, by the way. Uh, there's a couple of videos already released with him about uh, martial arts. Uh, and I will release the full talk soon after this talk. But part of the talk, which will be released on this channel, not yet, but will be, was about the hero's journey. And him as a doctor, as a scientist, I believe he's an anthropologist by, by you know, uh, what's that, like, uh, expertise. But just really smart guy, you know, and has a good head on his shoulders. And we spoke about the hero's journey and the importance of symbols and being inspired by symbology. Uh, all that stuff which, you know, kind of resonates with me already. But a point he made, which kind of struck me and made me stop and think, is that idea that Perhaps the hero's journey is just an idea. A powerful one, but perhaps just an idea. And that almost shook me in a good way, but it shook me, it made me stop and think. Because I realized and recognized that deep inside, I was hyped and I was believing in the concept of the hero's journey for a long, a long time. Uh, I, I, I really felt, and I spoke about that in, in, in the journey videos, if, you're, if you've watched some of these videos before, I spoke about the concept, the idea of, you know, I, we all have a mission and, and kind of having a sense of a deeper purpose of serving humanity. And, and I still like those ideas, but that's the thing. I stopped and asked myself, 
what if he's right and the hero's journey even and i don't want to push your buttons too much i know this is like for, for many people this can be a sensitive subject and I'll, I'll be doing my best to just share my own process but i know it can push people's buttons too but but that's the question i pose to myself what if even a, a sense of you know higher purpose mission is an idea now i don't want to sound you know like uh, an existential guy who's like oh there's no purpose god is dead or whatever but that's not what i'm aiming for and that that was actually a follow-up of what we spoke with dr jared later right after that because his point was that even if it's not real if it's just an idea per se let's say the hero's journey uh, that was you know, that joseph kemble came up with um oh no there was music playing shit why i guess i'll just bring the microphone a bit closer i guess you shouldn't pick it up too much let me actually check the sound well, I, I, I guess and hope that this is not going to destroy my audio too much. I worked hard to place the camera here at this place, so position. So, um, a point that he brought up that even if it's not a real self-existing thing, or the way I understand, understood what he said, it doesn't matter, that it doesn't matter. And his point was, he also likes Batman, which is great, that... Even if Batman is not real, we, we, we know Batman is not real, right? He's fictional. He's, he, he's a created character by many different artists and, um, you know, authors, movies now and so on. But it's a fictional character. We, we're, we're well aware of that. There's no apparent Batman in, in the world, historically, that we know of. <laughs> but that, nevertheless, that, that character, that mythical character still creates a huge impact in our life you know i i actually am turning this window aside because i, I keep watching at it too much i want to look at you guys and women and girls and everyone so um so even if we are aware that it's a mythical character and that was the point of jared that the impact that that character has is real the belief you could say like the belief in the values and the narrative and the story that it delivers, even when we know it's not real, it's still the, the, the belief and the impact it has is very real. It makes us do things. Like I released a video recently about how Dragon Ball Z made me overtrain. And part of that is great because it gave me a lot of motivation. But part of that was, you know, very real results. I feel that's still in my back, shoulder and knee because I were trained and injured myself. But, but so the impact was very real in a bad way there but but that's also that kind of shows my point is that what we believe in can be super powerful i guess you know hello i guess that's already evident but but i'll make a different point soon but but so what we believe in is is can be very powerful very impactful but that's the question is what do we choose to believe in and that is my keyword and this is where the real story begins for me uh i was already playing with this concept with this idea which i call choice belief and that's the idea the concept of what if i kind of pose myself a question what if i can choose what i believe in because the trouble i had with the hero's journey for some time now and kind of uh, almost like like a, a almost like a potential crisis in my life because for the past couple of years i was so invested into being into being a rational thinker, a critical thinker. I was so invested in wanting to make sure everything I believe in has proof, that everything I believe in, you know, has evidence. And uh, then I, I realized that that kind of incapacitated me because suddenly I don't have the proof that Zero's journey is real. I don't have proof that I have a purpose. Like, I, not that I came across like some solid, legit proof, right? And then I have trouble in believing in something I cherished for a long time. The concept, the idea of a hero's journey that each one of us are meant to become the hero of our story to, to make this world greater. That was a strong belief in me, but I had this contradiction, this very rational, logical voice in me saying, what if it's not true? How do I know if it's true? Can I really allow myself to believe in if I'm not sure if it's real? And that was kind of a 
difficult struggle in me inside because I couldn't really come to terms. I couldn't really make a decision. So, so what, what, what do I choose? What, so what do I do then? And I could expand on that more, but, but I really want to make you know, this video whole rounded and, and add as much clarity to the whole picture that I can. So, so moving on from there, that's where I came up with the idea, potential idea of choice belief. And choice belief meaning, that was, that was the question asked, what if I can choose to believe that as long as it works, as long as it's functional, and, and you can see the influence of my hero's journey here, right? Um, the functionality aspect. Hero's journey, did I just say hero's journey? I meant martial arts journey. Of what I explored on my martial arts journey channel with martial arts, I kind of applied the same logic to my personal life. Asking myself, shoot, what if I, as long as the belief works and it doesn't hurt anyone else, it has positive influence, even if I'm not, even if it's not evidence-based, but if it works, what if I have the right to choose to believe in it and to, it, for it to guide me? Of course, given with rational thinking and the open-mindedness of potentially being proven wrong. You know, if somebody will tell, well, if somebody will prove me wrong, I will always be open to feedback. I love feedback. And if I choose to believe something and somebody will prove to me, oh, look, this is actually hurting others, fine, I will let go of it. But until then, if it works for me, if it gives good results for me, if it gives good results for others, why not choose to believe something? Again, I repeat myself, but even if it's not evidence-based, for me, it's just such a mind-blowing idea and concept that, that that's why I just like, you know, I'm, I'm so hyped about it. Now, um, coming back to the talk with Jared, I, um, he, he, he brought the, 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 he kind of very rationally explained the chance of the hero's journey being not real, but having real impact. Thus, it's stating that it's worth believing in it. He even presented the idea of, of introducing the hero's journey in schools so that uh, that potentially could decrease the suicide rate later on in the children's lives because we do need to believe in something. We do need to choose to believe in something. And so during this talk, you know, he's a science guy. He's, he's, he's a doctor, anthropologist, etc. very smart. And I was listening to him, I was, I was thinking, damn, this is a smart guy providing this, this, this idea, which is actually kind of close to what I was believing. And so maybe I should pursue and even further dig into the concept and idea of choice belief. And uh, you know what? I am going to move. I'm concerned that the sound is not good here. I'll snap the video and, and you'll see me in a different place. All right, so you just witnessed the uh, downside of living in the city center where there's always something happening and somebody's making noise, but, but I think the noise here is better. So let's continue. Uh, so the talk with Jared inspired me to pursue this concept even more. And, and I decided to do something quite drastic, I guess quite extreme, which is a bit of a part of my personality. I sometimes do extremes with doing my best to stay, you know, smart about it. But um, so I sat down, took my notebook and uh, which I used to like to do a lot and just, you know, dig into myself, self-analyze. So I decided to go for it and to, 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 to question everything I believe in. This is the extreme part, right? I decided to ask myself, what are the fundamental fundamental things that I believe in that, you know, they're, they're, they're my core fundamental beliefs, what I believe even without thinking about it, like something that I in, in, took on and decided this is real, this is my reality and something that in my subconscious influences my actions all the time. And uh, as I already kind of made a hint at at the beginning of the video, a lot of that was the hero's journey. Again, the belief that I have a mission, a purpose, that I have to serve people. And notice the word have to. That was, that was, there's the dog. That was it. That was the important discovery that I made. Because yes, those are, those were core, my core fundamental beliefs of serving people and you know having a mission and it, it it gave good results because it always pushed me for more 
it always pushed me to do things which are sometimes not really the comfortable things to do. It always pushed me to to go out of my comfort zone and, and again, even to do something which I feel is right, even if that's against my own better good, which includes, you know, like, like the Akito versus in a video, that, that belief system led me to do it. Even when I knew that, damn, I might lose my students. This, this may be, this may end up being crap. Everybody's going to hate me, but I have to do this. You know, it's important. So it empowered me in many ways. But when I brought that up and questioned it, and question the functionality of it, I realized there's also a dark side to this. There's also a negative side to this belief. While it drove me to do great things, it also drove me to stress. It also drove me to, to feel pressured from inside. Like, like because I, I would have that belief that I have to do better for the sake of humanity, again, emphasis on have to, I would notice that if I would take a weekend off, and would not work, by Monday, I would feel an internal stress, an internal pressure of, man, I didn't do anything for three days. And even if that wasn't, wasn't like a conscious belief, I would recognize subconsciously that in my subconscious, that pressure was built up. So I was putting internal pressure upon myself, uh, both consciously, but even more so subconsciously, that I did not serve humanity enough. And now I need to serve. You know, now I need to do something. I need to work that time back, which I gave to myself. And I, I, I realized, damn, it's causing actually a significant amount of stress in me, especially if I you know, don't put in the work. And then when I stopped and kind of brought that up and, and you know, put it in front of me, that core belief, and I asked myself, what if it's not real? Like, what if it's not true and there's no have to? And that was just like blowing my mind. First of all, it was a very tough process because I feel it's my kind of uh, consideration that we do need to believe in something, right? Or need to, I, I'm now avoiding this word, but, but there's a, but a belief, you know, it's like a support structure. It helps you feel sane. It helps you feel grounded. Even if that belief, you know, is, is not a good one. It gives you a sense of confidence. But when you question your core fundamental beliefs, holy crap. For a moment, you have nothing to rely upon. And that was a bit of a freaky place to be. I was just sitting there, I was like, holy crap. And I, I felt like I need to, I need to find an alternative. I can't just stay in a place where I suddenly challenged my core belief in a hardcore what level. Asking myself that potentially this is not true. Something I believed in for years. And that drove me and guided me good part of the thing is I worked my ass off for like four days in a row. I was just like all day long, just writing stuff and asking questions and answering. And sometimes I would take breaks, you know, sometimes I would just sit there and listen to music and look at the sky and I was sitting in a cafe and sometimes I would go back home and play God of War. Great game. I love it. Uh, I would sleep well as well when I when it was time for bed. I, I would feel like, oh man, okay, I exhausted my brain. I need a break. I would take a break. I would rest, and I would come back at it again. And I kept going like this again and again, day after day, until eventually, bam, the concept of the choice belief came back, came up, and I deeply asked myself again, what if? everything I believed in is potentially not true and I have the full right to choose what I believe in and base it on functionality based on what works because that's that's what I started to ponder and consider that against so many beliefs we have most of them are not really inherently ours most of them are set up and taught to us early on through some kind of education. You know, whether that education is a cultural education, you know, from the early days, religious education, something we learned in school, we pick up pieces and bits and pieces of the beliefs which are out there and we, we decide, okay, this, this makes sense to me, this makes sense to me, or somebody tells us that this is real. And some of it kind of works, like even religion, as I think it's a quote from Sam Harris that, that I heard from Matt Fortin, it's doing the right thing for the wrong reason. You know, 
religion can make you into a good person. I've met some religious people who are awesome. You know, they are caring and giving, but there's a chance that they are caring and giving because, no, I'm, I'm not saying that about particularly these people, but there's a chance they're doing it because they're afraid that they will go to hell, you know, or that God is watching them. So it's kind of doing the right thing for the wrong reason, per se, potentially, right? Like, let's not get into religious wars here yet. <laughs> But so, so you take that belief, so, but you're taking also the, the, the parts which are functional and good, but you're also taking the parts which are questionable and potentially uh, neg having, which have negative results. I, I realized that happened with what I learned from my Aikido instructors, my teachers. Some of it was good, but a lot of it really shaped my mind in a bad way which I had to kind of look and question and, and be like holy crap those beliefs that I took on they're not very healthy so there was good but also by taking the good I also took the bad and that was not really mine I, I, I don't know if you really see what I'm pointing at I hope you do and I'm sorry for you know for being so kind of rough edged about it because this is fresh and new and I'm still working on it but I just felt I felt that this may be so big, this may govern a lot of my life from this moment on, whether it will or not, I don't know, but there is that chance. I feel already it's been some time that I'm adapting this, 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 this belief system, this idea of what I call choice belief, and it's already having really powerful effects on me. I can, I can see them. They, they're, they're already like manifesting in actions and decisions and how I feel. My stress levels went down. So I see the potential and power in it, and I just felt, I guess I just feel an urge to document it because who knows, if this is something that really will be influential for a big part of my life, I want to record it while it's still fresh and, and share it with you. And who knows, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe I'll be like, oh, you know, that actually sucks. But so far, this is really interesting. So, so let's, let's just pass a few more moments of looking at it. So the last few things I wanted to say here, uh, although this is endless, but you know, again, it's rough edge. I still need to work on it and purify it and crystallize it. But something I wanted to, to bring up, it's kind of the follow-up step because I don't want to suggest to you, I'm not suggesting anyway, anything. You know, this is my process. Please don't, you know, please don't copy me. This is not my aim. I'm just sharing my process and you take whatever you feel works. You know, don't be ex as extreme as I am. But, um... So yeah, the, the first part, I questioned my core fundamental beliefs, considered what if they, well, that's, you know, that's the effect. I'm like, I feel, you know, shivering. I feel shivers going through me. That, that, that consideration of what if everything I believed in is potentially not real and there's nothing I have to do. There's not, and, and again, emphasis on have to. There's nothing I have to do. Yes. Now the follow-up is there are consequences. I am not saying, you know, and to a degree, yes, you, I don't have to pay taxes, but if I won't pay taxes, I'll probably go to jail or pay a big fine, and I don't want that, so I choose to pay taxes. But in many people's psyches, the idea is that you have to pay taxes, and that's a very different narrative, that's a very different structure which has a different effect. There's a, there's a, a very big difference in empowerment when I say I have to versus I say I choose to. And, we, and I noticed myself, there were so many things I considered I have to do. You know, I, I have to show a good example. I have to make videos. I have to create positive influence. But the next step is, what if I don't have to do anything? So as a huge stress reliever and blank page. And this is the exciting part. I can choose to do what I feel works, and even better, I choose to do good. I choose to do things which are good not only for me, but also for others. I choose to continue my journey and even sometimes sacrifice myself, you know, for the better of others. But, but it, it's not because I have to, but it's because I choose to. What if I choose to be good because, and this was one of my key points, because why not? Why not? Why wouldn't I just decide to be good? If it's my choice, if I can do anything in life, obviously with all due consequences, why not just choose to be good? 
and to do good for others and myself. So the mentality almost stays, but the game field is very different, right? And I don't know if you see the difference, but it just feels so different. It is so different because now I'm fine if I need to take a week's break, I can. Especially, you know, financially that allows it, I have that capacity. You know, if I, if I, you know, if I feel like it's important now to spend time with my girlfriend and not be like in a padding mode, oh, I didn't do enough work and I'm sitting there with my girlfriend, but actually I'm in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I need to work, I need to work, you know, life is waiting for me to work. That's kind of, that kind of sucks. But if instead, if instead I decide to, you know what? I, I choose not to worry about that right now. I will give, I will choose to give to humanity later. Now it's time for me to be with my girlfriend. Now I, I choose to, to cherish that relationship. I choose to rest. I choose to take a break. I choose to try and I choose to fail and I choose to, to experience the consequences. As long, my only pointer so far is as long it does not hurt anyone else. For me, I choose that. I choose that as the core line. It's still fundamental to me. I just choose it. And if you'd ask me like, you know, what's your evidence? What's your proof? Why do you choose, you know, what makes it smart? It's like, like, why not? Why not? Why not choose not to hurt others? Why not, why, why not choose to be, you know, honest and good? And, and do good for others. So I choose that. But I choose it with great sense of power. That it's my choice. And I choose it on my terms. I'm not doing it because of some supernatural thought or, or deep religious belief, you know, or Buddha, Jesus, or anyone. I choose it because, you know what? It feels nice to be good. It feels nice to do good shit. Why not? And even, even more so, you know, sometimes that get re gets rewarded. And I do want to do good in a way which has positive influence, I mean, which, which, which supports me, you know. I choose to do it in a way where uh, hopefully it will, you know, not, yeah, I choose to do it in a way which will give me some financial feed, uh, benefit as well. So I could survive and I could continue doing it. That's smart. But I'm not doing it just because of money. That's my, not my main priority. Well, anyway, I could speak endlessly, but I feel I'm starting to go in circles because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to just make the same point and I hope the point came across, came through. There was one last thing I wanted to say here. And yes, okay, this is the final, final message here, final idea, final consideration. And that is, in, in one of my previous videos, I spoke about, or a couple of videos, I spoke about my concept of creating a, a, a movement. Uh, what was that word? I, I really had a really nice phrase for this, but you could say, I guess, okay, let's let's play with this right now, because uh, that's the first thing that comes to my mind is, I want to create a movement of a culture, right? That was the other word. I want to create a movement, a culture of people living not only for themselves, but also for others. Trying, uh, working their, working, working towards becoming their best selves, meaning, you know, always improving, always, and that's actually another part of my philosophy, which I'm developing now, is, is always putting an effort, not, and always is a strong word, <laughs> but putting constantly, regularly effort to, to be capable of giving value, which will be beneficial for others. And I think the more unique value, then it's greater, but it doesn't even have to be unique, but, but you're doing, but your life is not only about you. It includes you, but it's not only about you. So, so I'd love to create a culture, a mindset of more people living like that. I think life would be awesome. If that would happen, life would be awesome. You know, and that's, I think that's where I started this new journey where I was not able to communicate that from the get-go with, you know, my weird new outfit and, and so on. Uh, but I think that was what I was already aiming for intuitively because it would be so awesome to, to have people who... You know that that they're they're most sincerely living life not only for themselves but also for others. They choose, and this is where choice belief comes in. And this is where I have I see it has potential towards that that vision. I choose to believe 
that it's good to do good. You know, that life is not, I choose to believe that life is not only about me. And then if you would, you know, you, you would somehow recognize these people and you would see them walking around and you're like, oh yeah, look, that, there, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a choice belief guy. You know, I, 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 and obviously, you know, there's other things which can come up and then how do we make sure that they're not egomaniacs, they're not narcissists, and how do we make sure, you know, that they're not taking advantage of that? Those are all different questions which may, we may cover in the future, but just, just, you know, play with me for a moment, stick with me for a moment with this just idea. You know, I see a guy walking and you're like, oh, crap, well, that's a guy who, who's, you know, who's living not only for himself, but also for others. Let's sit down and have a coffee. Or he's like, hey man, you know, I, I also believe what you believe in. Or maybe, you know, we believe different things, but, but we both believe that it's good to, to, to do something good for not only yourself. I know that he's putting that effort. It's, it's, for me, it's like seeing Batman or Spider-Man, you know? You see Batman or Spider-Man in the street, like, like that's what Spider-Man mythology does sometimes point out. You know, you see Spidey just going through and you're like, oh, oh crap, that's Spidey or that's Superman. That's kind of the concept. The idea of Superman is that, you know, he's, he's the hope giver, right? He's, he's the symbol of hope that you see him flying by and you're like, oh, he's working his ass off. He's working hard to make humanity better. That reminds me that I should do that too. You know, that, that's kind of the message of The Dark Knight Rises, which I'm not a big fan of, but, but it's a nice message right so what if though if people like that would be around people that you can trust people that remind you that life is not just about ourselves or that we choose to believe that life is not about ourselves us included but not excluded excluding others and 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 i'll just ran a little tiny bit more you know usually our circle the way i recognize it is you know first of all it's me then it's me and my girlfriend, or me and my wife, then it's me and my children, then it's me and my parents, then it's me and my, you know, and, and that's how I used to define maturity. The bigger the circle of care is, the more mature we are. You know, mature, an immature person is care, cares only about himself. A mature person cares about, the more he cares, the more mature he is. So, you know, Gandhi cared about whole humanity. It's a high level, you know, selfness. There's a high level of maturity. Uh, Martin Luther King cared for, you know, the, the, the future of at least America and, and uh, you know, his race. And he was willing to, you know, sacrifice his life for it. So I'm not saying to push, that, push it that way, but I'm just giving you examples of maturity. You know, there are people who care for their country. There are people who care for the un European Union. And there are people who care for the world. And so, yeah, I could go endless with this. But, but it would be awesome to have people that you know that they choose to believe in that and they choose to live respecting that, honoring that, and doing something about it. Again, and there's so much space, so much stuff to navigate around here, you know, making sure that things don't go astray, but, but there's potential there that I see. And, and this last point that I wanted to make is interestingly enough, so far for me, the idea of choice belief seems to be like a potential player in this exploration. Meaning that if, if I allow myself to question my beliefs, including hopefully, you know, dark beliefs, such as my race is superior, you know, based on people, you can define whether people are good based on, or good or bad based on their sexuality, stupid shit like that. If you, if you question that and you ask, does, is this functional? Does this really help? And you let go slowly of the harmful beliefs and you choose to believe in something greater, something, something that benefits you and benefits others, and you, and, and you place power and empowerment, that type of empowerment, into your hands, making sure that in the meantime you're not hurting anyone else. Wow. It's an interesting potential. And that's what I wanted to record in this video today. So let's not make this endless. I am already guilty. I hate that word. Let's not use that word. You know, I, I already you know, couldn't make videos quite long. I'll stop here. Thank you for watching this long. I know I ranted a bit. I went in circles and that was kind of the point of this video. But man, oh man, I, I hope you're, you find some interest in, in what I'm exploring and share your thoughts. You know, let me know in the comments what you think about this. I have a feeling I might come back to this and share it in a more defined, better way. 
but heck. This is the recording of the first time of me sharing, and who knows if this will be the last one or not. Who knows what I will choose. Okay, let's end here. Thank you. See you later.